Hi, everyone. Hi. We are here at Winning Appliances in Richmond in Melbourne. So we're going to take you on a tour. Well, we're not until here is that we're going to introduce you to me. And um, hopefully you can hear us okay. And Nick is in the control room today <laughs> as we try and navigate around the showroom. So um, if everybody could put their questions in the chat box, we will, um, yeah, yeah, we'll get to here to help you out at the end. So we're going to begin now and take you around. Okay, so let's start. So this is... Hello, my nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the women's show here. We'll do a little to show you what everything is and then touch on a few key points, you know, integrated uh, refrigeration versus free standing underbed ovens versus, you know, your tower or wall ovens and a bunch of other things. I'll take you this way to start with, if you like. So I want to take you to the the winnings wall to start with, what that really Take you upstairs to show you how to can show kitchens. It's really important to show our clients uh, show kitchens as well as designer show kitchens because from our perspective, it gives us a really great understanding as to what each individual client is looking at from a design perspective, from a layout perspective, uh, and then simply from a cooking perspective as well. So induction versus gas or uh, a sink on an island bench top or a cooktop on an island bench. So let me take you this way. Bring up the stick. Apologies if it's a bit wobbly. <laughs> I'm a, I've got a tripod. <laughs> That's a bit wonky. <laughs> This is very cool for any Melbourne people. You should come in and have an actual browse around. Okay, I'm going to just pop that there like that. So this is well, technically our third show kitchen, but we started back to front. So each show kitchen as we go along really gives us an understanding uh, of, as I said, what our clients are looking for. So this uh, show show kitchen which we'll show you in a second uh, really kind of signifies simplicity it's it's the kitchen that uh, potentially your clients will want where they don't want a messy kitchen they don't want a um, quite a, a, an impactful environment they want something very sleek very minimal in this instance you probably have a butler's uh, pantry with your cooking appliances your your sink for washing up your dishwasher and so on um, so we'll take a take a look around uh, the, the kitchen, for example. So you've got fully integrated refrigeration just over here. So fully integrated uh, refrigeration, refrigeration just over here, in here, and as you can see across the back, all very very sleek and minimal uh, with uh, a full. Uh, Stainless background. So, as I said, uh, you wouldn't be having uh, any appliances really on show, but just one design perspective. Uh, we'll move to the second room in a second, but it really just gives us, as I said, an understanding of what our clients look for when they do love this room. We know immediately that they want something quite modern, something behind cabinetry, as you can see with this fridge, but also something uh, where you're kind of you have the kitchen for show rather than for, you know, entertaining rather than for, for cooking and for washing up and so on. I'll take you into the next room now. That's not part of it, but later. We'll touch it, we'll touch it. Uh, winning to at home room, so we do specify in uh, specializing in kitchen appliances and so on, as well as laundry. But we do have a few uh, key features here. So another thing we touch on is uh, fire ethanol fireplaces. So, from a design perspective and an installation perspective, typically a gas fireplace, two range hoods, uh, those are probably your two, and even induction cooktops are your trickiest. Uh, 
in schools and strength and you know from an induction perspective you do require quite a large amount of uh, electricity so the hard wiring and so on to ensure you have enough uh, when you're not in the industry can be quite a complex arrange with the way it's stuffed and and you know the, the sizing and so on to match your football this is quite significant uh, and then finally a, uh, sorry, a, top, uh, a fireplace you know we typically either talk about you know your traditional real, real fireplaces or a gas plum fireplace something like this fireplace which should have turned on that would have been nice but it's, it's called a planet and what it is is it's a bioethanol fireplace so it has a tank underneath and you just fill that up with uh, bioethanol uh, almost like a hose and almost like you know, filling up the car with petrol uh, but the benefit there is from an install perspective it literally just slots into place uh, you just plug it in with a traditional you know 10 amp plug uh, and it's ready to go so really really beautiful really safe as well so and quite resistant a book fell on it, someone fell on it, it would turn off straight away and also provides quite a, a fantastic amount of heat. Uh, so something like that, not only is it extremely economical from you know, a gas built perspective because you don't have that gas pumping, but also extremely safe uh, and you know, quite beautiful to look at. So, uh, how long will the burn be on something? So it depends on the model. Uh, this is more 1.5 meter series 3, which is your top of the range. That's about 10 to 15 hours on top of my head. It naturally does vary quite a bit. Um, but, and they come you know, different sizes. Different sizes, it's probably quite nice to see. But uh, the, the black uh, base that is actually can be kind of open, so you can change that as well. So if you had a white stone, or, you know, you have green tones, for example, and you traditionally it would be quite hard nice to incorporate a, a green base there, but you really can. Um, you know, adjust and get quite creative there. So, you know, the importance from our perspective, I work with quite a few designers as to all of my colleagues, and it's to build that relationship with the product expert at Winnings or wherever that may be, because there's so many different variables and different uh, appliances now on the market uh, that uh, your traditional way of thinking and laying out the kitchen. You know, when your clients come in here, that most likely change will kind of provide the best appliances for their needs and for their home. So it's really important that you build that relationship with whoever you do deal with on a regular basis for all your clients so that you're, you know, in unison and in one. Okay. Uh, but certainly if you look at what I'm talking about, something slightly different, I'll take you to yeah, another room. I want to say the secondary uh, show kitchen. Oh, wow. And That's straight great. away, uh, you can see... You can very, very different. So very light home with a, a brass range on the top. Quite far houses, so we have about three standing balcony cookers um, in all three different styles. Once again, something uh, quite different. When we are talking about your you know, high-end clientele, we look at these VR fridges uh, just uh, to my right, which we'll, we'll show in a second. These are not freestanding fridges, but built in. So very commercial grades. You would have seen pictures of them. Uh, you know, in, in magazines and so on. Another brand that, that, that does uh, your freestanding refrigeration, probably more commonly known, would be Sub Zero. Uh, a similar equivalent. So, you know, they are a statement piece in the kitchen, although this is quite a loud kitchen, uh, you know, with all different tones, uh, colors, uh, quite thick bench knobs and so on. Uh, even in a quite minimal uh, kitchen, something like your big built in stainless steel commercial grade. Uh, Fridge really is, is that statement piece. I'll take you around here now, talking about uh, working with uh, your product expert as a designer. This is something that is quite unique. This is uh, not your traditional thing, but it's called the galley workstation. Uh, when our clients look at galley workstations, it really is you know, giving them an appreciation and an understanding of what a sink possesses and what a workstation possesses. So, Typically, your sink probably doesn't sit in the island, it goes behind you. We do recommend that when our clients look at the galley, uh, it goes on the island. Now, the reason for that is uh, we call this a workstation because it's multi levels as well. So, I'll give you an example here if you want to just look down. So, look, so that's wonderful. So, if we look over here, you can see that. That's one level, and then you've got a secondary level as well. So the galley comes with all separate accessories, 
but it gives you multi-level usage as well. So when you rotate the board, um, it actually adjusts the level for you. So something like the galley allows not only for you and your family and your clients, and your clients' family, sorry, to work together in the kitchen, but it also just allows for a fantastic entertaining tool. So um, with things like the chopping board, you can also use it uh, as a cheese butter or like your colander. Of course, you can use that to wash up. It's obviously you can also use it as an ice bowl for oysters or beer or champagne or whatever that may be. So it's a fantastic storage tool, but it's also a fantastic way of presenting to your guests, but also, you know, washing up on one end, presenting, cleaning, cooking on the other end, and so on. So typically with the galley, we'd actually, well, it really does vary on your space, but we would actually recommend potentially doing a cooktop next to it as well, because then you've got this seamless preparation, cooking, cleaning area as well. So the reason I wanted to show you that is it's something that typically you're not going to come across too frequently from, you know, when you're doing your plans, realistically, you're probably going to be putting your cooktop against the wall, mm -hmm. occasionally a cooktop on the island bench, but typically you're seeing them go in the, in the butlers or against the back wall. So that's when I say, you know, we really do encourage you to, of course, not have an understanding of appliances to the level that we do here, but to appreciate different appliances because it's not you know, just traditional, you know, under that oven and, yes. and your cooktop and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. The brand. So this is called the Galley, so it's an American brand. Uh, on top of that, they do have their matching uh, taps. Certainly you can just get any tap you want, but the real benefit is it's kind of the example they would give is it's kind of like having an iPhone, but instead of having an Apple Watch, you want a Fitbit. You don't get that full compatibility and connectivity. So you've got, of course, to pull out with a vegetable spray, which is quite traditional, but it's completely silent tap as well. So, as silly as that sounds, you know, if you're on an island bench and you, your guest facing opposite you, you need to just wash something quickly or so on. That loud jet, as silly as that sounds, does make a difference. So, it's silent. You really are silent. The only thing you will hear is when the basin fills up and you've got water hitting the water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, quite a beautiful product. Um, and, you know, that's why we do start up here. Because not only do we show our clients different colours, different tones, no. Naturally respond to us and say, I like this, I don't like this, I like it minimal, I like something quite profound, but also it gives us an understanding of specific appliances uh, that we can then show them downstairs because when we go downstairs, we'll see everything's you know, separated by brands. So you can sort of narrow yes. down those selections. Spot on. Yeah. And, you know, it's, most people will come in here and it, it really is, you know, if you go to buy a car, for example, you have a general understanding of what you're looking for, whether it's specific brands, if you want, you know, a sports car or a sedan, you know, a four wheel drive, you kind of have that understanding. I'd say 80% of our clients will walk through the door and they will say, I want this, and when they change it, because, you know, it really allows them to understand what they're looking for and then find them with the best uh, possible outcome, a bit like what you were doing, you know, if someone says, I want this in my kitchen or this car or this style, but it doesn't suit that much educating and giving them options which you know at the end of the day provide them the best possible experience and that's what you guys all want to do and it's something what we can do as well. And opening up to various other products, right? I think the best example is an underbench night to send to the oven. It's probably in most of your homes. It's something that we wouldn't move away from, but we typically would recommend this other style for a place to next to the home. They allow for not only from a safety perspective, not leaning down to pick up things, but also much more fluidity in the kitchen as well, which we'll touch on a bit later. This is Quizair, yeah. yeah. So this is beautiful. a yeah. beautiful uh, feature piece. The actual uh, brass feature piece wasn't done by Quizair, but they do all different customs. So, a brand like Cosette who specialise in range hoods that sit over your cooktop, they will literally basically manufacture and make anything to any colour and any design. It will take almost the impossible. What they won't do is jeopardise their quality. So this is something where, you know, if you are looking at an island uh, cooktop and you need that range, I mean, from the legal perspective, you do need a range hood, but you don't just want it. You know, the traditional t shaped kind of be going for a feature piece like this where it opens up the kitchen. And once again, when we talk about a state of piece, it's just mm -hmm. beautiful. So, yeah, that is a real state. Yeah, and it, it allows some element of creativity. Yeah, it's a good arrangement. 
my dad is on it. It's just beautiful. Lovely. Let's go to the Where are we going room. now? So the next space. Hey oh, guys, I hope I'm doing an okay job. <laughs> it's not too wobbly. So, this is our final uh, kitchen. This is called the entertainer. You can see that you know, we've got our big dining table uh, just to my right. Uh, with the, with the kitchen. So, little things that we thought of like going for a better table with a better seat over here. These are things that you typically find oh, in a, in a, uh, in a home or in a kitchen 90% of your jobs. But as simple as it is, it kind of lets us know straight away if it kind of oh my god, I love that scene. Uh, and there's not many of us on the market, it tells us straight away that they, they want to influence on the colour and so on into their design. So it really does, you know, little things like that really do assist. Well, they're going to be a little bit more grow. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, nowadays, as we kind of find the usual tones of typically what most people will go for, I mean, there's the occasional person who really wants to add and incorporate quite a bit of colour in it, just to assist us once again in that as well. I'll show you this as uh, well. So, this is the PR one, which I was talking about in the other room. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So, this is just your traditional fridge and uh, freezer. I shouldn't say traditional because it is quite unique. Uh, but from a point of difference, this is when we really wow. you know, do talk yeah. about uh, different devices yeah. and so on. Yeah. Uh, this is a wine cabinet, wow. but uh, it can also be turned into a bush of the rear and so on. Um, oh, yeah, room. hang on. I'll bring it around so you can see. All right. I'll see that. So this is the only you know, retail residential um, on the market, to my knowledge, I might be a bit wrong there. Um, but once again, it just allows for that flexibility, something completely different in the home. You know, a built in or integrated wine cabinet is something that isn't found in every home, but for wine lovers and so on, it is incredible to go that extra yard and provide something that is completely unique onto the market. Really just shows that you can basically do anything and everything in the kitchen. Going for something like this, if it were a traditional wine cabinet, it doesn't mean you have to put that in the kitchen. For me, I'd be putting a wine cabinet in a dining room, in a bar area, in an entertaining room, because that's typically where you want to show off your, you know, more significant special bottles of wine. Something like Chateau, I mean, naturally probably put in in a kitchen because of the uh, significance of the food and you know having to slice it up. Uh, but, you know, something quite unique, quite beautiful on the market that just stands out and really shows you that from the client's perspective, you can do whatever you like. Mm. Well, let's head downstairs. Okay. I'll show you a few different... I just need to show the red sink because okay. it's pretty cool. Yes. Oh, I'll show you this as well. <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. So uh, quite different as well. This is Bora. Uh, quite difficult to see in the Bora, oh. which is a German brand. So, this is basically what we call a downdraft uh, induction. So, yeah. it's a traditional induction cooktop. But instead of having an overhead range, you have the range basically in the unit. I guess the, the benefit to these is if you are perhaps in in, a, in an apartment, or you don't have the flexibility to dump to range the out uh, property out either out of that through the roof. These are fantastic for that purpose. Uh, on top of that, uh, if you were to put one of these in an island like you see here, and you didn't want that, you know, beautiful feature that we saw uh, in the other room, uh, this is an option as well. Typically, we would always recommend draft lines to do arrangement because. Much more service area, it will really ensure that you remove your roaders. But for me, you know, if, if we were to know any down drop, or I would say that you know, the specialist who is in this market, uh, German ladies, uh, essential, they really, you know, you're doing this for knowledge and almost knowledge that this, if you can imagine, quite a small pot of pan sitting here to have your steam and oil and smoke going down, it is quite difficult. Mm -hmm. So for your pots and pans and parts of the or whatever that may be, it's quite difficult. Whereas a traditional dry pan does an exception to the moving down. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So for one of these, because you have your ducting and so on mm. the, the load, whether it is ducted out at that pool or recirculating into the house, you typically lose your traditional drawers underneath the hot pans. Uh, Maybe squeeze the uh, drawers on the sides of each unit that it has money, you would need to find a bit of space in that perspective. Uh, when we do talk about these against the back wall, the, the argument in the space perspective is well, then you have overhead cupboards. And then typically, from at least our perspective, if you are uh, if you are putting one of the new motions on against the back wall, then definitely you always recommend the information as long as you want it will come from the Chinese, you know. Dinner's yeah, ready if you're not cooking, if you are cooking, and you kind of realize the whole kitchen smells like steak or fish or curry, whatever that may be. Um, so that's why we always recommend like, the best possible extraction you can do for the jobs. Let's head downstairs. I'll just give you a shot of the showroom from up here. Okay. Oh, there's a couple of poodles in here too. <laughs> a couple of dogs. <laughs> Animal friendly. Oh, that's great. This wall's cool too, guys. Look at this green wall. There's so much greenery in here. It's stunning. So yeah, I guess. This really is also a fantastic example where everything that is in the show is really important from a design perspective. So, hey, our head designer um, in Sydney really played a key you know, pivotal role in designing not only our upstairs show kitchens, but um, the showroom downstairs. So, as you see, when we walk around the showroom downstairs, it's really based uh, on brand with a mini section that I'll show you in a second that you know, has our. Uh, coffee area for our customers typically will have a few baked goods. I think we have a few out today, but we probably run out. Uh, but even things like the plants, so 100% of the plants you see here are, are all completely real. The reason we've done that is I mean, it, it does look fantastic, but it, it's also an opportunity once again for our clients to ask questions like, oh, where did you get this? And this looks beautiful and something that they can once again incorporate into their home. Um, so we have a team of you know, our gardeners that would come twice a week uh, to, to take a look and you know, polish the, the leaves, trim anything that needs to be trimmed and really just look after uh, the show, which is incredible. Uh, let's Someone wants to join. Yeah, okay, so we'll have a walk around. So, everything is by brand from a brand perspective, and uh, the actual brand has worked with Winnings to design their, uh, their certain areas. This is our Richmond showroom, we have a showroom in Chadston, and we have a showroom in Brighton. Brighton, the showroom is fairly old, so over the next few years, I imagine it will be re redesigned and so on. But Chadston's almost like uh, so you would notice if you walked into the Chasden show that certain branded areas do look quite popular with their own twist on them as well. Um, so uh, this right here is Snake, which is one of our brands. Uh, this angle. Uh, so an Italian brand is quite a popular brand as well. So when we are walking around with our clients, uh, we, I guess, qualify our clients to find out what they've had in the past, what colours they're looking for and so on. If, if you take a look over here, so this is our Dolce Stilnova range, so this is your top of the range snake. Uh, quite a unique uh, design, as you can see here, they've got a lot of rose gold sorry, finish on them. Uh, it is something that really is standalone on the market, typically with almonds turning to that black, they are that solid colour, or maybe even the stainless steel hand and so on. What the rose gold really allows is it almost softens the black in, in the kitchen. So when you are looking at you know, really light tones in your kitchen, going for a harsh black on one hand can provide a contrast, but for a lot of clients, it's, it's a bit too much. That little uh, rose gold finish just lightens up the, the oven and so on. So it really is it's beautiful. It's really unique. So 
of course, we want to ensure that our clients, you know, are purchasing the correct appliances for their cooking needs. But at the same time, you know, we really encourage our their clients to enjoy the style and the design of the product as well. At the end of the day, if you don't like something, you're not going to want to use them there. So, one, once again, quite a few different brands. So we've got our built-in coffee machine over here, uh, which is fantastic. We've got the traditional connection pilot, so 60 by and 60 by oven. Once again, quite unique on the market. This is wow. Up, yeah, that's very fair. Might have to be a bit wrong there. Probably a bit less, but it's built in uh, wine. So it's a single zone wine cabinet. Uh, and you know, it's quite unique on the left and right hinge. Uh, and underneath as well, you've got your sommelier drawer as well. Oh, stop so it. This, this, in fact, this would be perfect in my opinion for climbing in a kitchen, certainly, but the bar area. Wow, uh, it's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? A few empty bottles, a few empty bottles. <laughs> Lose anything? Would you, you know, the, like the third drawer where you find yes, everything? Yeah. No, you don't need that. Even from a design perspective. So, your, if we go back to your pyrolytic oven quickly, traditionally you do have different sizes of pyrolytic yes. ovens, but they come in a 60 height. Yes. So, whether you're doing side by side or a tower, if you needed this space to the side, you could put this uh, wine cabinet yes. in and you have 15 mil um, of a gap underneath. That allows for your wine. Uh, so your sommelier to also fit in perfectly. So they really have thought of everything here, which I actually didn't show you. That's your traditional warming tool as well. Once again, your pop machine sits at a 45 height. So it allows for things like your espresso cups and so on to sit in here. It works really, really well for that. So from a layout perspective, you really can kind of provide every possible service without losing any space in the kitchen. This is your standard height uh, warming drawer. You can get different heights as well. So if you were, you know, massive in baking, you like to do mm. sourdoughs and things like that rather yes. than just scones or small tarts, then going for a larger one is certainly suitable. But you know, it's a range of Mm. Of course, so a pyrolytic oven is your traditional convection oven, which you know what all of you would have at home, basically. So it's just standard, you know, fan forced oven. Of course, it has each oven has a range of different automated features, recipes, and, and kind of unique uh, qualities that each brand works on. What pyrolyt pyrolytic means is it's self cleaning. So if you take a good look in here. It's quite hard to see, perfect uh, actually. So that weave here uh, that Sorry. I'm kind of, that's perfect, that I'm uh, touching now, that is your seal that basically allows the oven to self-clean. So it will increase the oven, does depend on the brand, to around 480 degrees and basically burn everything in the oven. So when you are in, you know, most fan or most food and so on, it really does allow the maintenance of the oven. I look at pyrolytic almost like, you know, once again, going back to that car analogy, whether you, you're massive into cars and, you know, you need the best design, biggest, the biggest engine, whatever that may be, or you just, you know, drive your car A to B, what pyrolytic kind of is, is kind of like maintaining your car. So every year, 18 months, you'll, you'll get your car serviced. It's exactly the same as this. If you want your car or your oven in this instance to last, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, depending on the quality of the oven to start with, the pyrolytic function really allows for that. So if you are a meat eater and you do roast and so on, I'd say three to four times a year you use the pyrolytic function. It's really safe as well. So 
the families with young kids, uh, it locks the oven. So when you put it on, you've got three different options typically, so low, medium, and high. Uh, that will change the temperature slightly as well as the longevity of the process, but it will lock the oven. And in Smeg's instance, uh, when the pilot functions on, the glass will sit at around six to eight degrees, I believe, off the top of my head, above room temperature. So at 480 degrees in here, I can literally just put my hand on here for the entire process and I won't burn myself. Break the Yep. Fabulous. So clean. Yep. <laughs> hey Gabby, can I just can we just can we just confirm Christian? that that's oh. all Smeg? Yes. That is Smeg, yeah. Yeah. Cool. That was just the question. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I'll show you. We're in the SMEG section. Yep. One more price uh, that SMEG have to offer. This is completely unique on the market. It's the only uh, product on the market, once again, from the retail sector, not from a commercial kitchen perspective, uh, that allows for this. So, this is for Blast Chiller. Uh, what this allows for is fantastic for time for people with young children. It also entertains as well. So, this can actually chill and cool problems with beer. Wine, champagne, you can do a panna cotta in here. Uh, what you can also do when we do touch on refrigeration and freezers, typically a freezer will, you know, rapid freeze your food, which forms crystallization and so on, which sucks away that nutritional value. What this does is it's almost like a reverse air conditioner where it slowly uh, reduces the temperature without freezing or forming crystallization. It will then bring your food to negative 30 degrees which you can then put in the freezer. So as your food defrosts, so for example, you, you do that, put that in the freezer for your kids' you know, lunches, put their frozen food in their lunchbox. By the time they get to lunch, their food's you know, passed or whatever that may be, is completely defrosted naturally uh, without losing that nutritional value, that taste and so on. Uh, on top of that, you can bring food up to temperature. So going from frozen to defrosting to actually reheating and allow that function to sit for up to 72 hours. So, you know, you can put the frozen food once again in the blast chiller uh, before work, put it on to be ready at 6.30 p.m. Hypothetically, let's just say you're stuck in traffic, you don't get home until 7.30, it will remain at eating temperature until you get home, or up to 72 hours. Uh, from an entertaining perspective, as I said, you know, you buy a case of wine, or you buy a slab of beer and it's not cold, Probably, I can say 12 bottles of um, beer in, in here, and they would go down to whatever temperature you like. So rather than putting them in the fridge and it taking however long, it's a much. How long would that take? So, so you do have automated and manual functions. Yeah. An automated function where you said I want six bottles of wine to so if it was white wine, maybe six seven degrees, for example. That would probably take 40, 45 minutes. Having said that, though. You could just put the blast chiller to reduce to negative 30 degrees, for example, and in about seven, eight minutes, you'll maybe 10 minutes or six bottles of wine, maybe a bit longer, but you know, when I'm talking yeah. 20, 30 minutes, it would be ready to go. Wow. The issue with that, though, I should say, is it's just happened before. If you forget about the wine, oh. <laughs> or whatever it is, if it reduces further, you, obviously your wine is going to you know, blow up. So yeah. be, be careful. careful. Yes. Uh, but quite a unique uh, feature. Just have a drink. Yes, yeah, that's it, yeah, that's it. <laughs> they have to be drunk, isn't it? All right, moving on, okay. Yeah, I've got to... I'm going to take you this way. Right? Yeah. Take you to another round. These are just quite a point of it. Uh, different on the market, uh, yep. and I'll show you. Uh, we'll touch on some refrigeration. Uh, oh, there's a train going past. <laughs> so this brand, so if you Ooh, heard of course. these, so it's a Swiss brand. What they really uh, specialise in is combi steam cooking technology. So what a combi steam is, which I'll show you in a second, is uh, your traditional oven. So it's standard in a pan for oven that we were just talking about. It's also food steam and then the combination of the two. So what that basically means is once again from a layout perspective, you typically got you know your vegetable microwave, your rice cooker, um, 
if it's gas reduction, you've got five or six burners or so, uh, whether it's gas reduction. What the steam allows for is your traditional everyday cooking, like your steam veg, your steam rice that you do in your rice cooker or your cooked off in the oven. So it allows for basically you clicking two or three buttons, walking away and getting the same exact result every single time. So I'll okay. take you over to this. Um, and then I should mention as well, um, basically every single brand now that we have in the show does a DC, does a piloting oven, does a production and so on. It's going to be quite hard to see this, so if you want to come. So, oh, yep. So, oh, it's almost impossible to see, but that's okay. You're not going to be able to see it. Oh, it's because it's because the stainless steel. Right. But what this has yeah. in the oven is a point of difference that really kind of allows me to specialise in combi steam cooking. Is it has a moisture and humidity control sensor. So to give you an example, if you were to do, or if we were to to do rice for the three of us, it would be like three cups of rice with equal parts of water. Because you're using that steam in the oven, you don't have you know double up your water like you traditionally do. You traditionally do so. It's going to take you around 25 minutes to cook that rice, right? so it's a reasonable amount of time. Having said that, though, if you then have a dinner party and you'd like to do rice for 10 or 15 people, it doesn't matter how many cups of rice you use, 15, 20 cups, you just do equal parts of water, and it will take exactly the same amount of time. So from an automation perspective, from a time safety perspective, it really does allow for uh, simplicity in your cooking. So you don't have to worry about checking the rice and so on. It does exactly the same thing every single time. Mm -hmm. What it also allows for, if you are doing, let's say, rice, um, veg, and a steam fish, you can set your uh, steam temperature, put all three in on different levels, and just take them out at different times as well. So it really does allow for simplicity. But what these are allowed for is automation as well. So things like if you want to do an X, it takes you about 10 minutes to do soft soft boiled eggs, basically, uh, if you wanted to do toasted salmon at lunchtime for one person or five people, it takes around six and a half to be perfectly crispy on each side and melted in the middle. Wow. A risotto from scratch you can do here. But on top of that, the other advice we haven't touched on is the vacuum drawer as well. So quite a unique product once again. Uh, this is probably the only appliance apart from maybe a fridge where you're actually making your money back on the appliance. So what this will do is it will vacuum seal all of your leftover foods uh, that you haven't cooked, even food you've cooked. So it basically sucks out all of the oxygen within the bag and preserves it for a significant amount of time. Long. So to give you a really simple example, the average Australian family, which is about uh, four people in Australia, wastes around eight to ten thousand dollars a year in food waste. So the food that you find in the back of the fridge and so on, basically. You just throw out something like this, as well as a high quality fridge, preserves your food significantly longer, which in essence means you don't go to the shops as much, you don't throw out as much food. Food you forget about, a lot of the time you look at and you go to the market, it's actually still preserved and still fine and still available to eat. So something like this certainly allows for that. To touch on wine as well, you can actually vacuum seal jars and bottles of wine. Uh, so it comes with a hose, so it actually wow. takes out all of the oxygen, stops the oxidization process in your bottles of red or white, whatever that may be. Uh, so exceptional. Uh, but then you can also sous vide cook, which is your traditional slow cooking steam. You can do that in your body steam as well. So it really just once again allows for quite a bit of flexibility. And from a layout perspective, as we said. Can you ask about the technology? How long has it been around? Is it sort of something that, that I know steam, steam ovens have been around a while, but just sort of. Vacuum sealing. Yeah. So vacuum sealing's been around, you know, years and years yeah. and years. This combi steam came to market in about 2000. Uh, vacuum sealer drawer, I actually don't know when it came to market from a built-in perspective, but a lot of people have, you know, a bench top vacuum seal drawer. What this does, the bench top vacuum seal drawer doesn't have, or do, sorry, is it? it's commercial grade, so this will actually take out all the oxygen, whereas a bench top one won't do that. So basically, it uses heat to seal everything and then sucks everything out as well. Yeah. So quite a unique uh, product on the market. Sure, it's 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 uh, why don't we touch on laundry? Uh, yes, quickly. laundry. Yes, isn't it beautiful? Yeah, this splashback, guys, is curved. 
I'll show you this one's really cool. as well. Yeah. So this is typically most lab designers love this. So this is our handleless oven in the visa range. So it's touched to open and touched in both as well. So believe me, I think 99% of the designers that I deal with don't want handles because they want that beautiful sleep finish. So as I said, you simply touch the open, touch the open. Ooh, nice. so beautiful. Yeah. Let me show you the refresh number. It's got laundry, is it? So this is laundry once okay. again. Every single brand, not every single brand, I should say, but most brands will provide a washer dryer option. So we won't really touch on those. Of course, have different, you know, capacities and sizes depending on what suits each individual home and so on. You come around here actually. Mm -hmm. This is something that's completely unique, completely unique on the market. Really, really uh, exceptional for. Uh, for your uh, for your uh, laundry rooms and so on, <laughs> just so you can see it. So this is what we call the refresh butler. So what this is is when we think of the traditional drying cabinet that allows the clothes to hang up and dry, this kind of takes it to another level. So the same steam technology that we were just talking about in the combi mm -hmm. steam is actually in here. So using uh, UV rays, steam, uh, and heat. Uh, like a traditional heat pump technology, what this will basically do is it will refresh your clothes. So everything I'm wearing right now, as long as I didn't have any you know, food stains and so on, I can put in here, it would remove the majority of my creases, remove the odour and so on. So uh, the benefit there from a dry cleaning perspective is you certainly don't have to go to the dry cleaners anywhere as much, but also, you know, if you have, you know, you're, you're into high-end fashion, you wear, you know, thin material suits every day and so on, to have a cover that basically refreshes uh, and dries all of your clothes is exceptional. If you were to put something in the washing machine, I wouldn't then put it in here. So it doesn't act like a actual dryer that completely dries your clothes. But, you know, if I were to go out on the rain, had a jacket on straight in here, or if I were even to go to the gym or, you know, go for a jog and I've been sweating quite quite a lot, I could just change the odor level and just let it go. So completely unique on the market. You'll actually find a lot of these in, you know, like airport lounges and, you know, high-end hotels uh, and just something that's completely unique. But as I said, works as a traditional drying cupboard, but works as a full steam. So great um, for business people. Exceptional. School uniforms. School uniforms, blazers, yeah. shirts. So, so yeah. we had a client who bought this just for their wedding dress after their wedding oh, day. So it just sits there. I imagine they've probably got other things in there, but just for their wedding dress. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing you really can't put in here is leather. Yeah. Just, just the moisture. Yeah. It would uh, not do so well. I'm just thinking of all those um, businesses too that hire out dresses. And oh, things yeah. for themselves, yeah. like high end shoes, yes. that would be a fantastic yes. idea when they bring it back, you know, back to oh, you. And yeah. Well, I, I, one of my clients, she's a she's a fashion designer uh, and really unique business actually. So all of her uh, clothes come out of uh, India. They're yes. all hand stitched and handmade, and she basically each piece she does one piece per size or like one to one piece there's like five of them different sizes whatever that may be yeah. uh, and you know the amount of dry cleaning she does on a regular basis this would be absolutely mm -hmm. perfect for her yeah. because you know she's literally sending most to the dry cleaners once a week yeah. once again from an economical point of view we don't like to you know typically talk about money and things like that because it really is about what's right for you and then we work mm -hmm. from there uh, but from an economical point of view the savings once again over a long period of time just yeah. and it's full, fully integrated as well which is nice so yeah. but whatever cabinetry you want there as well which is yeah. once again like, we're talking about that what, what would we be looking at something like that <laughs> sorry good time to mute us <laughs> sorry we didn't catch that sorry <laughs> so it's and as we say it's, it's not for uh, you know every client it's mm -hmm. certainly not but it, yeah. it's something where you know believe me you know you show someone we talk, of course we talk about the price but it really is about you know is it right for you mm -hmm. and if so well how long are you staying in the household for are you staying in the house for two years five years ten years twenty years mm -hmm. twenty years is you know thirty thousand twenty thousand yeah. but uh, 
compare that to your dry cleaning and so on. If, if it's something like suits and so on, it actually is worthwhile. And, it is an investment. Yeah, and that's what it's all yeah. about. Uh, there's, there is quite a vast range of products that yeah. suit certain people and don't. And even from a design perspective, there's certain materials that suit certain people and don't. Mm. And, and mm -hmm. so on. Yeah. What do What's next? Where yeah. are we going? Do so typically you've got well you do have quite a few options with fridges so you've got integrated fridges and what an integrated fridge means is basically you've got wow. your own cabinetry on it as you can see so the cabinetry here suits the entire surround rather than having just your traditional you know built-in fridge the benefit to an integrated fridge is Firstly, a design perspective, but as we go up the ranks, it really allows for high quality refrigeration, which in its own, you know, preserves your food, your veg, and so on to a greater extent. What you typically lose in an integrated fridge is depth, so front to back depth. So things like oven trays, batters, from an entertaining perspective, do struggle to fit in an integrated fridge. There are a few brands on the market that do allow for a deeper fridge, like Diesel, the brand we saw upstairs, well, Viable with the pusher to rear, that actually has the additional depth, which allows, as you can see, for your oven trays, batters, and so on to fit in the fridge when it's fully closed, which is why you need. Traditionally, your integrated fridges are kind of that higher cost value, so uh, you can certainly find some cost effective refrigeration uh, for you know, all clients, especially if they, they want that sleek look. If you're looking at a fridge of this size, which is a 90 wide fridge with a freezer down the bottom, uh, across the market they probably start at around six to seven thousand dollars and go anywhere up to probably twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars. The significance from you know something at six, seven thousand dollars to twenty-five, thirty thousand uh, dollars really is the food preservation and the internal materials. So this is a, you know a very good example of this is a twenty thousand dollar fridge freezer. What allows it that price really is firstly probably hard to see on the camera, but you've got a full stainless glass and aluminium material, so you don't have any plastics internally, so you can probably see plastic here, but when the fridge is closed, there's no plastic within the fridge. So the benefit there is plastic absorbs odours, whereas stainless steel doesn't, but also stainless steel absorbs your temperature really well, so you're going to have a much more even uh, temperature within the fridge, which in essence preserves your food for a longer period of time. Now these traditional crispers as well, which and hold your, you know, fruit, the veg, some meats, and so on. They're aluminium, and it'd be nice if you were here, but if you, if you have a field guys and you want, they're extremely, extremely cold. Oh, wow. yeah. They're also extremely lightweight yeah. as well. So it's very hard to see that your air vents to the, to the right, they actually they sit under here and hit the side of these extremely well. So what that does is it reduces the temperature in these crispers quite significantly. So the fridge is sitting at about five degrees. There's no temperature degree on this, but I, I'd probably say around negative one, negative two degrees anyways. As well as it being fully closed, this will also reduce oxygen levels as well. This will actually preserve your fruit, your veg, your, even some meats significantly longer. So once again, there's no specific time frame on it, but to my guess, it would be two, three, four times longer on some vegetables and so on. Um, that you would typically have in a virtually traditional crisp in like a $6,000 integrated fridge, uh, but even compared to just your standard zone as well. So quite an exception. I'm, I'm really loving the design of this as well. Um, you see like the curve in there, the ease of clean. Mm -hmm. It's like in so you can sitting. take these off as well. Yeah. So, oh, uh, yeah. Um, so just that so simplicity just, of cleaning with mm, the curves on the side rather than trying to get into no, the No, gunk. Yeah. yeah. And then from a freezer perspective, pretty straightforward and traditional. Uh, oh, wow. A, uh, a standard uh, bottom mount freezer. Once again, still aluminium, full stainless steel and so on. As a point of difference, sorry, this is a plastic uh, ice dispenser bin. But apart from that, that's the only thing. So as a point of difference, what bees will possess across the market, and all of these brands have these you know, similar qualities and different features, so firstly, we call this the combi cooler. So the freezer through the interface can actually be changed into a fridge as well. So nowadays, your clients will probably have 
you know, their old freestanding fridge that they'll put in the garage and the butlers mm-hmm. or something along those lines. When you are entertaining, you know, Christmas birthday parties and so on, you need that bit more fridge space. This can be turned into a full fridge. Oh, oh that's nice. Secondly, your ice, your ice dispenser, which produces, this one produces 100 ice cubes every 24 hours. You can actually change the ice cube size. So this is your standard size ice cube. You can enlarge the ice cube size of things like gins, whiskies, aperols, any, I mean, even if you just want to do smoothies, but you want to large ice cubes, uh, you can certainly achieve that. So little things like that really make a big difference in a fridge. And when we do talk about uh, food preservation, the eight to $10,000 that people waste in the fridge, mm-hmm. although we do need to appreciate the fact that, you know, you are buying tiles, bench top materials, paying for trade, you're realistically doing a full renovation or a build, which encounters quite a few costs. Uh, a fridge at this price point is certainly a stretch for a lot of people, but that's when we talk about the education side of things. It is an investment. If you buy something like this, wasting eight to ten thousand dollars a year isn't going to turn into zero dollars of waste. It's probably going to turn into two or three thousand dollars if we if we look at that. So you're saving instantly in one year five six thousand dollars, and then from there you're saving, saving, saving. Uh, but at the same time, that doesn't mean this is right for everyone. Someone, a lot of people will go to shops every single day, every single day, and they'll buy what they need. They won't do one or two shops a week; they'll shop every day. In that instance, you go well. The food preservation mm-hmm. might not be perfect for you, but they might like it. So, so, you know, these are things we really need to talk about. So, the reason I want to talk about this more so is, you will send your clients in here or somewhere else. And, they will then say, I looked at this. I looked at the galley sink, which is $10,000 just for the workstation. And you go, oh, this is not what I expected at all. As you get more comfortable, a lot of designers will actually say, you don't need that. You don't need that without really knowing if they do need it or so on. So to have that brief understanding of what this does or what the galley workstation does to then give your own professional opinion because you are going to be working with these clients and probably you know, emailing them two, three times a week, meeting up with them once a month or once every two weeks uh, to appreciate that as certain work well, well, I, think it's, a, yeah, yeah. I think it's a really good point you touched on to have that to have that basic understanding of what everything is and how it works it's yeah. really important so you can when you're designing a kitchen you're not waiting to choose a client it's, you know, it's easy yeah. yeah. alright we're going to move on to the next I know. one day so when I went to <laughs> be nice, eh? It would be. Oh, I'm going to quickly show just some other things about it. Which I'm going okay. To touch on barbecues and winter. Yeah, time. sure. And then we'll, uh, yep, we'll do some questions. Fresh. Yeah. So, oh, look at all these. Super wow. Fresh. This is Neva, an exceptional brand as well. Okay. Uh, we do have other options for integrated the same thing. So, yep. we have something like what we um, were just looking at at 90 centimeters to large, you know, it might be for an apartment for two people and maybe just want a fridge freezer. Yep. It's certainly an exceptional option. Um, but the 60 column, this is what I'm talking about, you know, $4,000, $5,000 for something like this. For other brands like Bosch or Siemens, you'd be looking at around $3,000. So, although you don't get that large 90 centimeter capacity, which is fantastic for larger base foods yeah. and so on, for big, big families, it's certainly suitable. And you can, once again, Fridge, freezer, fridge, freezer. Oh, uh, I'll go around. Yeah. Well. So you do get that flexibility is really what I'm saying. Uh, so it just allows for, you know, different options. Uh, if you didn't have enough space in your kitchen, hypothetically, even for a family of four, family four, so you do fridge, freezer in the kitchen and then you have a fridge, freezer in the buffers and so on. So there really is depending on space, size, and so on, that always is an option for integrated, which is quite beautiful. Then if we look behind us quickly, this is just a freestanding alternative. This one? Um, yeah, so beautiful. So this is uh, a freestanding lever once again. Mm-hmm. So what you see here is almost identical to what we saw uh, over in the integrated range. So what you are getting in a freestanding unit, of course, is your stainless steel front. Uh, 
uh, beautiful refrigeration, soft clothes, and so on. So from a longevity perspective, you certainly can still get that. It's not necessarily full as minimal. So if you are looking for that super sleek design, that's when the integrated does come in handy. The benefit though for the freestanding is typically you get a bit more depth once again. So when we talk about other trays and platters that wouldn't fit in your lever integrated, they would fit in here. So it allows for a more cost-effective uh, alternative to an integrated look. And yeah, if you were to put your refrigeration in the butlers, you could probably get away with not going for that sleep look, even if your clients want that. Because um, you know, it's not only you're not only paying for integrated, but then you're paying for your cabinetry and, and tray to put that on. So the costs certainly do add up. So it's, it, it's nice to give your clients options. From my experience, you know, of course you probably already know this, but when working with clients, we can firstly, you know, never sell on your own pocket. Uh, you should never assume what someone wants, but, you know, you certainly give them options. So this is an option. Uh, and this design, or if you want to go integrated, this is certainly an option. Uh, you will lose out on a bit of depth, but it's more sleep and so on. So it's really important to give uh, our clients options as well. Yeah. That's great advice. Yep. Uh, and I should say as well, once again, I know we just touched on these of the lever for refrigeration, but once again, you've got a range of different freestanding integrated fridges, uh, and of course, different price points for your freestanding refrigeration as well. You know, anywhere from five hundred dollars, four hundred dollars to this is about twelve thousand. It's two units, but it's six and six to anywhere. I'd be happy with that. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Let's quickly touch on barbecue. Barbecue. Once again, uh, quite a unique selling point as well. Uh, once again, with a barbecue, you do have quite a vast range of uh, options. So, this is what we call Kalamazoo. Uh, it's a Kalamazoo barbecue. We call this the gaucho. So, uh, this is kind of like your Rolls Royce the barbecue. So, firstly, it's full, it can be so it's full marine grade 314 stainless steel. So, to have an appreciation when we do talk about an alfresco area, if your clients are you know, to see anywhere, Kalamazoo say anywhere in a 50 kilometer radius, that is quite a large space. So, if it was you know 40 kilometers away, you'd probably be fine with standard stainless steel, but you in Brighton or you know, Mount Martha, you know, anywhere close to the sea, going for a higher grade stainless steel ensures that your barbecue or your appliances don't rust and so on. It really is the screws and the joints that typically do rust because salt air will just get any. Um, something like this, the reason it is kind of your Rolls Royce uh, product on the market is firstly, everything is very difficult to see, but any joint of stainless steel that's welded together is fully seamless and, and doesn't have any bumps or anything like that. Mm. So only around 1 in 30 welders can do that in the world. So quite a unique feature. These are all completely handmade as well, uh, which I'll show you in a second. And as a point of difference, they're not only just a traditional gas barbecue, you can actually do a charcoal element or a wood element. So you can bring it here. Uh, Amazing. You can see. Uh, so you can see. Yeah. the wood in here uh, but also extremely powerful barbecue so each burner you i believe on this one with green dragon burners which basically look like the wage they're about 24 to 26 megas off the top of my head uh, per burner so to put that into perspective one of these burners is more powerful than your traditional built-in barbecue that you buy that sits at around you know, two or three thousand um, dollars and as we talk about a design perspective. Mm -hmm. really yes, can we see that? I don't know. I think so. Uh, if you can see those signatures there, this exact barbecue here, uh, which is the gaucho, those signatures are all the people in Kalamazoo that uh, designed this exact barbecue, oh, which is quite unique. So you get cool. a one of one handmade barbecue every single time. This is kind of an extreme, really, sure. isn't it? Like, yeah. But when we talk about people who like to cook yeah. with aromas or like to smoke uh, yeah. foods yeah. and things like that, so they do, mm. they do smoke foods, they do outdoor refrigeration, they basically can design your whole kitchen for you. So what we would do in that instance is we get your rough plans, 
uh, which typically the designer or the builder would send us. We literally just send that straight to Kalamazoo and they do 3D drawings, everything provided with pricing and so on. Uh, and that's your whole alfresco area. But they literally do, you know, you can do beer taps, you can do barbecues, pizza ovens, weatherproof cabinetry that's, you know, weatherproof through snow, rain, sun, tornadoes, absolutely everything. Yeah. Uh, refrigeration drawers, smokers, everything. It's incredible. So it's really providing that outdoor yeah. experience, a no. total outdoor experience. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, I, and the reason I show you this, you can get your more traditional, you know, built-in barbecues or even freestanding barbecues. But when we are talking about, you know, higher-tier clients who uh, want that dream house, looking at something like this, I'd say 90% of the people that look at like, look at this, go, I love this. They find out the price. It's not so fun. Uh, <laughs> but it's the, it's the one in... You know, 300 that want it for a statement piece, that want it for a resale value, that are obsessed with barbecuing or cooking flatbreads or pizzas and so on and really want the best of the best. Uh, that's when to complete the house, especially in Australia in summer, uh, where we're outside, you know, probably every day of the week, especially if you have that beautiful alfresco area, it's certainly, certainly worth it. Um, and to tee that up with range of something like this, you shouldn't put undercover. So it should be outdoors just because it is so, so powerful. So if you were, you know, doing a high fat stable piece of, especially with the rotisserie, the flame that you will get basically be fire hazard. So they are outdoor barbecues. There are ways of kind of doing your outdoor indoor living as long as you follow all the legalities and so on. But 99% of the people doing these in their homes, they would have to go outdoors unless they manage to get every single, you know, Okay. Cool. All right. Well, my battery's about to die, and we don't get to do questions. So, how about we do some questions? questions? Nick, have we got any people that want to ask something? We had one question come through um, about the winning the store in Sydney in Redfern. Is it set out like this one and then just as pretty? <laughs> <laughs> so Redfern is out. This stuff I actually showed in Rich in Victoria. Sorry, to my knowledge, this is the most up-to-date, brand new showroom. Redfern. Oh, I'm being tested here. I, I'm going to be honest. I'll probably get in trouble if I'm wrong, but I don't <laughs> think it's as up-to-date uh, as this one in terms of design perspective. Certainly, the layout is very, very similar. Where um, it really is still based by brand. It's very free and you can kind of move wherever you go rather than having sinks in one area taps in one area and so on i believe they do have a bit of that but it's still quite spread out um i believe once again it is kind of going through a bit of a, a renovation over the next few years as well but certainly victoria because we recently opened in victoria back in 2018 i believe um these are our you know more modern uh up-to-date show showrooms as of now there are works though uh, in, in, I believe, Sydney and for, for, for updates, which will be that they will be once again to another level where we're actually adding a few different things uh, into the show. Which yeah. will be very exciting. Yeah. Is there anyone else? That, no, that was all. That was all quiet today, guys. Yeah. <laughs> That means we've covered it all. Yeah, yeah. 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 well done. So, here. <laughs> so if, if, um, uh, you know, graduates ready to bring a client in there starting up and they, they want to bring it. Would you be the best person to, to come and see to hear? Yes. Spot on. Yeah. So from a winnings perspective, and this really is important from uh, your perspective, you know, when you do have your clients, no one at winnings across Australia is on commission. So typically, in a, traditionally in a commission-based uh, industry, the concern we tend to find is whether you bring your clients in or just someone mm. walks off the street, because, as I said, they're so more and new to kind of this world, they do take your advice. And, and to be honest with you, unless someone is set and knows what they want, we can literally move them in any way we want it. So at a place like Winnings, the reason no one's on commission here is it really is solely about customer service uh, and providing the best possible um, appliance and, and so on for each individual client's needs. So um, there's, I imagine, some very good places elsewhere as well that you take your clients to but any client you send here whether it's myself or anyone else here I certainly have the confidence that they would be provided with the 
you know, the high quality service that you would be giving them for. So you get that kind of transition, but also the correct appliances for them. So it is really important as well because it is your name on the line as well. If you inform your clients to go somewhere, you need to, you know, know that your clients are going to be looked after. Um, Absolutely. So, so 100%. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, if you say go see to here uh, at Winnings in Richmond and I'm, you know, my customer service is terrible and I don't follow up, I hope it's not that, but uh, the feedback you will receive from them and the trust that you'll have with your clients will mm. deteriorate uh, to an extent. And it's uh, about that, creating relationships. 100%. Yeah. So yeah. the way our, you know, the way we work at Winnings, I work in our architects and designers sector, so I, I'm certainly on the floor uh, as a product expert. I also work mainly with architects and designers, so your clients as well as many other architects and designers. How we typically work is uh, our architects and designers uh, will reach out to myself and uh, we will then uh, organize the time with your client. So you basically send us an email with your client involved. I'll reach out to them, organize the time. We'll do a form, show them to them, make them a coffee and so on. Uh, touch base on the appliances uh, and then naturally liaise with you and so on. So we be project managed for you as well. So as long as your clients give us permission, we'll send you specifications, uh, install manuals, we're happy to liaise with your, you know, the builders, the cabinet makers and so on, just to make your life a bit easier as well. Um, but I should say, you know, we've covered quite a bit today. And as you can imagine, when we have our clients in here, it's really is quite overwhelming. Most people want that traditional 90 centimeter underbench oven and we kind of switch completely a lot of the time. So typically I say to most of my clients, it's a three, you know, minimum three kind of visit journey. So mm -hmm you'll probably touch on cooking in one journey, refrigeration, and then six taps, alfresco. And then after that, you can maybe come back, you can talk on the phone or email and refine it to be placed. So it does become a lot of information. Oh, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you're more than welcome to come as well with your, with your clients. You know, a lot of designers like to be there with mm. their clients because they have their certain visions that they want to ensure stay on track. 100% you can of course do that. We typically say a session will last, you know, anywhere, depending on their time, of course, but anywhere from an hour to, you know, mm -hmm. two, you know, it really just depends. Yeah, so like out the be, morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Intense, but yeah. we work with you and at the end of the day, they're your clients, they're then our clients, and we're all working yeah. the same person. So right. we want to work together and, you know, provide a seamless, you know, positive uh, experience mm -hmm. for the clients. Yeah, that's so good. I'll just finish off if there's no more questions. Is that it? it? Yeah, that's all. Okay. Uh, at the coffee station. Yes. Yeah. Look at this light. Because bit we have to show. Can you see that? Can you see the light? It's like a whole there's mesh a light mesh. installation and beautiful fit out up here. And then if you come around here. I hope I've done an okay job with this filming, guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, it's been great. We've been able to see everything. It's fantastic. It's incredible. You guys have to come in here. This is the coffee. This is the important part. You get greeted with the coffee at the beginning when you come in. So these are our uh, Lamazopo mod bar built-in coffee machines. You, you probably heard of Lamazopo before, which is quite a reputable coffee uh, Manufacture uh, machines I manufacture in Australia, and so I'd say I'd say one one of every two cafes I go into now probably have a Amazon for quite a large mm -hmm. machine. Coffee machine we just pass. I don't know if you've seen our camera. Oh, out on not our one bar, sorry, our freestanding machines that we sell. These are your fully plant built-in coffee machines as well. These are very much commercial grade. They certainly can go in homes. But it's one of those where you basically need to have contact with ourselves and we then pass on Amazon but prior to you know doing any works within the kitchen. Then it wow. <laughs> so they're fully automated uh, and basically this is your these are your two coffee machines, this is your steam ones which cross your milk and so on, and then you've got your grinder uh, over here as well. Um, but of course uh, you know, part of the winnings way, I'd say, uh, all of our clients, 
people in your clients and so on. We always be offered a refreshment, so coffee and tea or water and a soft drink. If we have any, uh, we have a little um, goods treats area over here, which is quite empty at the minute. Uh, but we'll always offer them a piece of uh, you know, baked goods and so on. Uh, and then on top of that, it really is you know a start to finish journey and, and the finish line, if you want to say, is kind of when the appliances are no longer, you know, in their home, or, you know, in 20 years time and their appliances are replaced. So your clients are, you know, clients for life are winning. So we do pre and post project demonstrations. So we, we actually, we're looking for a culinary chef right now. We used to have a culinary chef who's since moved on. He's, he's exceptional. Um, who will, you know, do individual demonstrations to, you know, we've done wine tastings here. Uh, induction versus gas nights, coffee steam nights, and so on, just to educate our clients, but also individual brand cooking demonstrations. So, a pre purchase of a cooking demonstration for steak, for example, for our clients to really understand and be sure that they're uh, happy with the appliances. And then a post purchase, I'd say a month or two after using the appliances, so they can sit down and say, I did this in my oven, but it wasn't perfect. How can I improve that? 